Welcome back to another how-to video. I'm George Merchant with ECS and what we're going to go over today is fuses, breakers, and overloads. How to test them, how they work in the system, how to test them in and out of the system. Alright, let's go ahead and jump right in here. Okay, as you can see we've got our multimeter set up right here. We've got our fuse. I think we all recognize that they come in all different shapes and sizes. We got ourselves a breaker, and we got ourselves our overloads and ANSI symbols, fuse, right? Breaker, three pole breaker, and three pole overload. Okay, that's a motor overload. So, how do we test it? All right, outside the system, we're just going to take that to our ohm setting, take our multimeter to our ohm setting. We're going to jump right on in here. And all we're doing is we're just testing across the device, okay? That's all we're doing. And what we want to see, I'll get my hand out of the way. What we want to see is we want to see almost no resistance, okay? Very, very low resistance. There we go. I probably got a little surface corrosion on here, but it's very, very low. And it's basically the same thing with these as well, is we're going to test across. Well, I got to turn my breaker on. There we go. I'm going to test across that. And I'm looking. Okay, for very, very low resistance. And I'm going to check every single one across that and see that, okay, that looks like a good breaker. All right, that looks like a good breaker. It's better to test something like that in the system um, because it actually might have a higher voltage on it and that uh, resistance difference would show up. And it's the same thing on my overloads, okay? And I'm, all I'm doing is just testing all three. That's all I'm doing, okay? And all I'm doing is testing across that because I'm making contact, like as if I was touching these two together, there's a conductor that's, that's making contact through that. And it's the same on the inside of a fuse. Those things become overloaded, too much current poles, and they work in different ways. These work slower so that uh, your inrush current don't, doesn't trip. Breakers can be designed to be fast or slow, and fuses can also be designed to be fast or slow. Um, wherever I can, I do prefer to use breakers just because things happen, things get overloaded, and fuses, replacing fuses can get expensive, and uh, uh, breakers can be reset. So that's my preference, but in not in all cases is that uh, can be done. So in some cases, like on the input of a drive, some drives can only really have a fast blow type of fuse, I and mean, that's to prevent damage to the drive. So most overloads are kind of in their name, they, whether it's a fuse, a breaker, or a motor overload, they all kind of work the same way. Is they're, they're trying to protect the equipment and the wiring. So, which I guess would just be equipment as well, but what it's trying to do is prevent additional damage. So, um, something gets bound up, a motor, a fan blade gets wrapped up with something and it binds it up. You want it to overload. You want it to trip on you. These conditions happen, right? Too much material gets stuffed into something or the motor gets shorted out, you want it to trip. You don't want it to continue to try to run, catch fire, do additional damage, right? So that's the point of those. So let's talk about in the system. So I'm gonna close this and minimize this over here. And we're going to, as if we were in the system, test this as if it, if it was in the system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our meter and we're gonna say we're dealing with AC voltage. So we would take our meter and we would take it over to V with the squiggly line. That's my AC voltage, right? With one meter lead, what we're going to do is we're going to put it on reference and the other one on our test point, whatever it is that we're trying to test, okay? So if this fuse, for example, was um, being fed by a, like it was a 120 volt system, then what I'm going to do is, is my reference is going to go on to neutral and I would just be testing this. I, I would look at the top and bottom and say, okay, I've got 120 volts here and I've got 120 volts here. That would mean it's a good fuse. If I go here and I don't have anything, but this side I do, I got 120 volts here and nothing here, then I know that I've got a bad fuse. And I always will pop it out and then test it outside the system as well. Okay, breakers and overloads, they're kind of wired in a little bit more work to get in and out. So what I want to do is I want to test this in the system. So if I'm dealing with a three-phase system, let's go ahead and get these out of the way for a minute. I'm dealing with a three-phase system, okay? In a three-phase system, 
a, another leg is your reference. So all you need to do is, is take and say, okay, say you, I've got my three phase coming in here, right? I'm going to check here and I'm going to check here. I'm going to say, okay, I've got 480 volts coming in. Okay. I can check here and here. I've got 480 volts coming in. I can check here to here. I've got 480 volts coming in. Okay. That means I don't have a problem coming into here. So I know I'm all good there. Right. And I, I, I do that really, really fast. I do this really, really fast all the time, just about every day. I did it today. And that's just, I'm just checking real quick, making sure that everything's fine. Matter of fact, today I came across, there was two blown fuses on a shredder uh, feeding a reclaim system. So I imagine some of you guys know what that is out there. So knowing that it's just leg to leg here, but I'm wanting to test my breaker. So I'm wanting to test this side of it. So all I need to do is come to the bottom and keep one on the top that's not in line with it, right? Because it's just like checking reference. I'm, uh, it'd be like checking here. If all I've got a piece, a piece of metal coming down here, I'm just checking here instead. So what I should see here is the same voltage or extremely close to the same voltage as I would be seeing here. So I'm doing this right here, okay? And if when I move to here, I have to move this lead to either here or here because I need a reference. So I'm gonna move it to another spot. I'm gonna test this one. I'm gonna go here and move this to a different spot because I'm wanting to test all three of these, okay? And I'm gonna look and see if I've got 40. It's the same thing that I do with an overload, okay? These go bad. These actually go bad. Overloads go bad much more often than breakers do. That's actually a pretty common failure is for overloads to go bad. Um, you, 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 you're going to see that relatively often. If you, if you uh, do a lot of work with a lot of motor controls, this is going to be a common failure. Um, not super, super common, but it's still a common failure. But it's the same way, whether we're talking about a breaker or we're talking about an overload. What I'm, what I'm doing is I'm actually, even though my meter is on voltage, what I'm doing is I'm checking the internal resistance with power on, with the actual voltage that runs through this, okay? Now, you might even want to do that while the system is running. Say you've got a breaker that's tripping on you a lot, right? So you've got a breaker that it'll run for a while, then trip, run for a while, then trip. These intermittent problems. I've had these happen to me before and replacing the breaker and the, the problem solved, okay? Now I'll put an amp clamp usually on it, you know, on my, um, somewhere in line and just, just clamp the wire, maybe going out to the motor leads and, and make sure that I'm, I'm actually not seeing this problem. But, you know, you, you, as much as you might troubleshoot, you're gonna realize that it, it always messes up when you're not looking at it. But internal resistance can tell you a lot. So when you're checking these, when you're actually going through and you're checking these like this with it in the system and you're going there, what you're doing is, is you're, you're actually checking the resistance across this because if, if say I have 480 volts here, right? But then I go over here and I'm, and I've got like 410 or something like that. What that tells me is that this pole right here has got some problems in it. A, a electromechanical problem where basically there's arcing's been done, carbon's built up because it's tripped several times, something got melted, it's not making good contact anymore. So I know something's going on internally in here. And what, what am I going to do? I'm going to replace this. You're not rebuilding breakers. Um, you're just going to go ahead and replace that. Okay. So I promise to try to keep this a little bit shorter. So I have. And that, guys, is fuses, breakers, and overloads, okay? They're not very difficult devices to troubleshoot. Um, I do see people struggle to troubleshoot the breakers and overloads uh, uh, fairly frequently. And it's just because um, people don't necessarily understand what's kind of going on internally, and they don't necessarily understand reference. Reference is one of the most important things to learn when you're talking about um, troubleshooting. It's the first thing I introduce in my classes. I talk about proper reference. Okay. And uh, speaking of our classes, you can, you can go online, you can sign up um, or, or there will be a sign up soon. If, if you're, if you're watching this video relatively early over the next couple of weeks um, from this video's release, we'll have the sign up ready for our boot camps. Uh, we also do on-site training and troubleshooting. So uh, if you would, uh, check us out at improvemaintenance.com. That's improvemaintenance, no D in there. 
and uh, give us a shot. Uh, it, leave some comments. Please like. Please, please subscribe. It helps the uh, algorithm. And it'll, it'll help me be able to continue to put out these how-to videos. I uh, appreciate your support, and thank you for tuning in.